Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. I'm Oliver Bridgewood. And I'm Alex Payton. Coming up this week, we've got some details on newly crowned world champion Tom Pidcock's bike and some more information on our quest to find the most desirable bikes in the world. In the world. The world. Also, our main talking point this week is going to be why you ride slower in winter. So first off, an update on the most desirable bike in the world. Voting for the first round is done, but we did notice lots of comments underneath last week's show from people saying that we'd miss bikes out. Which is great because we asked you to do this and we knew that we would. And as promised, we are going to create another round of voting with bikes that you've asked for that we missed out. Starting with the Ribble Ultra in unicorn blood. A lot of love for that bike in the comments. Ah, uh, just to be clear. You should tell people that Unicorn Blood is not an actual colour, it's a name you made up. And now people are walking into the Ribble shop and asking for it. Yeah, thank you, suggestion boy. Get back to work now. <laughs> anyway. So we're also going to add in the Ridley Noah Fast aero bike used by Lotto Sedan. Also, the Time Out Duez 01. Yeah, which is a knitted resin transfer moulded frame, uh, just 890 grams and available in Rimmore Disc. Cool and bike. then we're also going to add in the Look 795 Blade RS, which is the French brand's flagship aero model. Yeah, mm. pretty cool. So. <laughs> We will reveal the full final results of the most desirable bike in the world next week. So make sure you click on the polls uh, in the description. I'll take you through the app and you can vote. So, you know, ultimately you guys decide. But we have had a first round of voting. Yeah. So let's see where we're currently at and what's made it through so far. So from round one, the first Grand Slam showdown was between the Pinarello F, the Colnago C64, the Tarmac SL7 and the official Batayin Power Plus. Tough heat. It was a tough heat. And the winner was the Pinarello F. Just. 37% of the votes. Yeah, got through. The next heat was between the Canyon Aeroad CFR, Bianchi Specialissima, Cervelo S5 and Tom Sturdy's 3D Titanium printed bike. And the Canyon Air Road took it with 39% of the vote. Next, next vote was between the Orbea Orca, the Trek Madone, Cannondale Super 6 and the Villia Zero. And with 35% of the votes, Trek Madone. Another through. pretty close heat. Mm. Yeah, Trek Madone through. And the next heat was between a Parley uh, Z0, a BMC Team Machine and a Moots Vermoots. And the BMC Team Machine stole that one strong. Strong. 64% of the votes, that one. Yeah. So then the final poll that we created from last week, why we had the giant TCR Advance, Maria Sculptura, and the Factor 02 VAM, and the Scott Addict RC. And Super this close. was very close. Just a couple of percentage points between each of those different options there. And 28% went to the Scott Addict RC. Scrape through, scrape through. But yeah, that's the first round of voting, so. Yeah, most important point, head on to the links down below and vote on the next round because we really need to keep this going. Mm. Right then, on to our main talking point. Why do you ride slower in winter? This is a question we get asked a lot here at GCN. There's actually some interesting science and a number of reasons behind it, some of which can be found by analysing big data. Oh, I love big data. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit too much. Yeah, maybe. Mm. Anyhow, <laughs> first let's confirm that we are actually slower in winter and we're not just imagining it. So, the website mywindsock.com has analysed over 2 million rides uploaded by users with power data. And from that, they can see a clear trend. So in February, you average, well, we all average, 26.6 kilometers per hour for all of the activities uploaded. Yeah. Compared with in September, 30.2 kilometers per hour. That's a big difference. Like, yeah, lots lots of reason. What's the reason for that? Well, there are several reasons. According to my windsock, we're less aero in winter. 7.5% less aero. I knew you'd get aero roped into this. Obviously. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's fact. Anyway, uh, this is something that we explored in our winter bike video recently. And it's, well, there's a number of reasons, but you're less aero because you're wearing warmer, 
bulkier clothing. Yeah. Uh, and perhaps your bike has mud guards or fenders fitted to it as well, which is going to slow it down. And they found that on average, you're looking at 0.8 of a kilometer per hour slower with your winter kit and being less aero, which is about 10 watts than, mm. than you are in summer. That's not the only reason though, because my windsock also analyzes regional weather data. And they found that on average in winter, the air density is much thicker. 5.7% in fact. On average? On average. Whereas compare that to the summer months when the air is much thinner and faster, they found that you could be looking at about a 0.5 kilometer per hour loss on your average speed or around seven watts. Yeah, hmm. and, and in July, the air is actually at its less, least dense on average. So that's its fastest. Yeah. Hmm. The third big reason is we just don't pedal as hard in winter. According to my windsock, um, apparently you put out on average 16% less power in February compared to September, the most powerful month where they found on average people are putting out 27 watts more and are two, two kilometers an hour faster as a result. And there's a number of different reasons for that. Generally, most of us are less fit in yeah. the winter. And also because we've got not so good riding conditions, the roads are a bit slippier, we tend to ride a little bit easier and a bit steadier. And many of us throughout the winter months won't be racing. So we'll just yeah. generally have a more relaxed approach to our rides. Yeah, I think you're just probably gonna have average powers that are lower because you don't, yeah, you're yeah. not likely You're not in the swing of racing, are you? Yeah, and I think mm. there's a motivation aspect to it as well, a psychological yeah. aspect to it. Maybe you're riding slower equipment, feeling slower. Winter and, group rides, you're chatting away with your friends. Yeah, and like yeah. winter tires slow you down. They've got higher rolling resistance. That's, yeah. that's got to be a, a factor too. But, you know, I think this is, you know, really sort of interesting stuff. And the important thing to remember with these stats from my windsock is they're averages and there are likely to be people that are actually faster in in winter, but also yeah. people that have a much bigger swing in, in these averages. So if you live in, say, Canada, which we know many of you do, you always let us know in the comments how yeah. you're always toughing it out in blizzards when we're just moaning about a bit of drizzle. Yeah, but, um, leaves on the road, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you'll likely see a much bigger swing in your seasons from, you know, September or August is going to be way faster for you yeah. relative to winter. So, well, yeah. There's our analysis of some of the data, but we really want to know what you think. So let us know in the comments section down below. And also remember to head over to the GCN app to vote on our polls for the next rounds of the most desirable bikes. Yeah, so next week we're going to reveal which bike is the most desirable according to you guys. It's now time for Hot Tech, and this week we're going to focus on Tom Pidcock, his shiny bike and his shiny shoes, because, I mean, oh, come on, he won the Cyclocross World Champs, for goodness sake. Yeah, did you watch it? I did, watch it live on GCN Plus, of course. Yeah, I didn't watch it live, I watched it on Catch Up On Demand, but that is one of the good things. I think not everyone realises this, but all the races that we show on GCN Plus, if they're available in your territory, you can watch them on demand without adverts, catch up whenever you like. Which yeah. I, I think it's great. So his bike caught our eye earlier on in the season. We took a bit of a look at it, but it's kind of been evolving throughout the season, hasn't it? And it's the Pinarello Crossista F. Yes. So this is a brand, well, we reported on it in the tech show, but it's finally been officially launched. And it's a significant upgrade over the previous Pinarello Crossista, their cross bike. And we understand that Pidcock worked extensively with Pinarello to try and create the ultimate perfect cross bike for him, with the end goal being to win the worlds. Well, I guess that plan worked, didn't it? Yeah, love it when a plan comes together. So some of the updates... Yeah, that was an 18 reference. <laughs> Fantastic. Some of the updates and revisions that have been made to the frame are in terms of the profile and the shape of the top tubes to help making shoulder in the bike much more comfortable. And also in terms of fully integrating all the cables and hoses into the frame. Yeah. Hmm. Also got additional like water drainage holes in the frame because, well, I mean, Start across and it's wet and muddy. Yes, um, <laughs> but but also the bikes are frequently cleaned and and you know jet washed down, so it's yeah. useful to have those holes that are just going to drain the water away. It also modified the height of the bottom bracket area and the chain stays were tweaked as well to Pidcock's sort of exacting specifications. Something that's quite interesting that we've heard rumor of is that Pinarello had revised and tweaked the layout process of the carbon fiber frame. Maybe that's specifically for Tom or just a development throughout the season? I don't yeah, know. so the bike that we first saw him riding when it hadn't been officially launched, we understand that the layup of that was different 
from the layup of the bike that he used in Fayetteville. Mm. That's pretty cool. Um, and it's light too, apparently just 7.39 kilograms uh, for his complete race bike build, which for a cross bike, that's that's pretty light. I mean, it's comparable to some like mid-spec road bikes. It's yeah. good, yeah. yeah, rate that. Oh, and there's also the paint job. We got gold logos over the bike to signify his Olympic gold medal in the, the mountain bike race, and also national champ stripes. And on the top tube, I think there's a play your cards logo on the yeah, top. Yeah, custom yeah. graphics and stuff. It's, it's, it's a really smart looking bike, isn't it? His shoes as well. Yeah. Cool, my eyes. Shiny silver shoes. Yeah, an interesting choice of silver, seeing as he is Olympic champion and the fact that he then went on to win gold in the race. But, you know, not one to pick, are we? Bling, isn't it? Yeah, it is bling. Also, we've got a bit of a note, a lot of layback over his seat, on his seat post here, presumably to help shift a lot of his body weight over the rear wheel, particularly helpful when you know, you're trying to get a lot of traction down on loose surfaces. Yeah, a big fan of this. I think he's, there's definitely been a trend over recent years for saddles slammed forward on the rails and no layback. Uh, but the, you know, the, the thing is, yeah, your weight distribution's not as good over the bike. It's more forwards and, and cross traction. Key. Yeah, it is, it is key. Also, bike fitted out with Durace Di2, very bling for a solid cross bike. Mm. And um, yeah, we're keen to hear what your thoughts are on the bike. So let us know in the comments section down below. It's now time for our new segment in the show, and it's called Best Bike Shop in the World This Week. Well, according to us, anyway. This is a section where you upload images and videos of your favourite local bike shop or any bike shop you visited, just to give them a little bit of a shout out. Yeah. Give them a give them a bit of a bit of love because mm. bike shops are core of well cycling culture, aren't they? So we need to celebrate them. Yeah. Now to submit uh, a bike shop, you go to the upload section of the app, then select the images or videos you want to use in your submission. Click next in the top right hand corner, and then click other. Fill in the title and description, and importantly, at the end of the description, make sure you use the hashtag bike shop. This bit's really important. Yeah, super crucial that you've got to have hashtag bike shop at the end of your description. Otherwise, we won't be able to find your, your submission. Yeah, so to kick things off this week, well, we've picked our own one out, haven't we? Yes, so that bike shop, for to be the best bike shop in the world this week, is Elmi Cycles in Ipswich. So this is, a, is a, well, a great bike shop. One of the cool things about it is celebrating its centenary this year. So it's over, yeah, it's 100 years old. First opened in 1922, which is rather impressive. Yeah. But it remains a great bike shop to this day. You've got good coffee, good friendly, experienced mechanics in there, good range of bikes. And the owner, Steve Grimwood, is a bit of a legend. He's a really nice guy, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. Now, he organises uh, local races, organises some high profile races as well, really inv invested in like the local cycling uh, culture. He's very passionate about riding. And he's also got a really good collection of vintage bikes, which he's actually lent to us on a few yeah. occasions. So I don't know if you remember, we did some Shimano content oh, last yeah. year, like the Game Changers stuff. Um, that was Steve's bikes that we used to help make that content. Yeah, they were out of his personal collection they were, weren't they? So really kind of him to, to loan us those iconic bikes. Yeah, he didn't ask for anything in return. So yeah, he's a bit of a legend, so thanks Steve. And if you're interested, here's a picture of the shop in 1922. It looks good, I was just looking at this picture. Yeah. It's crazy to see like how different stuff was. Look yeah. at all the stuff hanging up, like the wheels, as like the signs and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, and here's, here's Steve outside the shop in the present day. Uh, day. With his, with his uh, not rather nice Eddie Merckx uh, restoration yeah. as well. Very cool. So, so when, he's, when he's also not busy running the bike shop, he's setting up, like you say, local races, as well as helping organise some massive races. And he's part of the, the team behind getting the uh, World Masters Cyclocross Champs to mm. the UK. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. There you go. Pretty cool. um, so if you're in the Ipswich area, or, sure or if you go on holiday there, because we know a lot of you are international viewers, Make sure, yeah. you, make sure you check out Elmi Cycles. I'm not going to lie, it's not a, a big holiday destination well, for a lot of people. But it's it worth should it. be. It's worth a try, it's worth it for the bike shop. It's time for the Bike Vault. This is my favourite part of the show. You upload images of your bike, saying Ollie and I judge them to be either nice or super nice. If they're super nice, we ring the bell. Plus, reserved for only the greatest bikes, we have our new category, which we said we were going to like, it's like a mic drop, bell drop. Mm. A lot of comments 
under last week's video about oh, that. Was, yeah. People, people saying uber nice. Uber, uber nice. nice. <laughs> That'd be good. So maybe I don't know. Uber nice and a bell drop combined. Just do both. Yeah, we could. I'll go with both. Yeah. If we get a bike, we yeah. might never get one. This is for unicorn bikes. Anyway, what okay. have we got? Um, so first up, let's have a look at the most super nice bike from last week, and it's from James Bosley with is it a Pinarello Prince FX disc? Yeah. Wow. Ooh, yeah, I mean, I like he's that. ticking the boxes. Yeah. Biggie Smalls, wheels aligned, no clutter. Oh, he's got um. In focus. It is in focus. Cool back. Clean. <laughs> Clean. Campagnolo wheels with Shra um, Shimano group set. That's allowed. I mean, it's allowed. It's just just an observation. Not common to see. Do, do I guess. Do you think it's an? Do you think that's? But this could be an Uber nice. No, I, no, I can't no, give it. No, not that's this super nice. On. No, sorry. Super nice. Then. Okay. Yeah. Super nice. Ring yeah. It's super nice from us. So our first submission for this week is from. Teeks. Ring the bell for blooming. Oh, sorry. Jesus. God, sorry, I was God. slacking there. I do apologise. Um, first submission this week is from Teeks with... Is Icon Titan. I... Oh, yeah. Oh, I do like this. Cool gravel bike, that, isn't it? That is a cool gravel bike. That's a super nice. Yeah. 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 Uh, next up, we've got a Canyon Grizzle from BRZ2PYJDK4. Are they American? Can you tell from the username? Yeah. Okay. Um, and he describes it uh, as the best all-round bike you can have. And he's, he's he's taken it as a picture next to a mural of what he describes as the GOAT, the greatest batsman of all time. I think that mural's not great, but I think it's meant to be Sachin Tendulkar, the <laughs> little master. Uh, unfortunately, he's completely wrong in his assessment that that is the greatest batsman of all time. Oh. That is not true because, um, well, the greatest batsman of all time is clearly Don Bradman. Look at the maths, look at the statistical standard deviation. It pains me to say that as an Englishman because Don Bradman was Australian, but his batting average was 39 runs higher than the next nearest. So and that's for players that have scored over 2,000 test runs. Now. On average, the standard deviation is seven runs in someone's average, so between 40 and sort of 49. Don Bradman, he averaged 99 in tech. Anyway. Um, that's all cool, but it's super, super nice. nice. Yeah, oh, yeah super. cool. <laughs> Next in, um, Ooh, you might have to Baum, help me out. Baumgartner Lorenz with his Cipollini Bond. Okay, this is a cool bike. Like this. Um, yeah, you like that? I do like that, although I tell you what, a few years back, I was quite a fan of a shallower front wheel and a deeper rear wheel. However, I feel like uh, yeah, it's, it's evading mm, me now. Yeah, and also the, it's pretty dirty, that drive chain. Mm. It's not clean. It's a nice from me. And Sorry about that. that it looks a bit cluttered. Yeah, nice. Nice. Next in is from Sangazum. Yeah. His third TT bike. Th Canyon Speedmax CFR TT. Wow. That looks rapid, doesn't it? That is a very fast looking bike although, although biggie big on we the can't one let that bike. slide no on the valve slide. at the front biggie big no it's no good just chucking new, a new, mega new, bike new, in new, with new. poor preparation it's new, just a nice yeah. next in is from level 46 with a brother cycle stroma I wonder if he's a fan of level 42 <laughs> i'm not sure maybe and <laughs> and their slap bass virtuoso frontman mark king Maybe he is. He had his thumb insured for like two million pounds. Anyway, that's that's all irrelevant. How much is your hair insured for? <laughs> a lot. More than that. More than that. Now, I picked this out because the background was cool. Oh, it's a good mural. I love a good mural. I need to zoom in on the picture to get the bike. Um, so, with a lot of zooming in, I can see that the valves are aligned. The cranks aren't quite aligned. No. There's a long, um, big, big bit of chimney. chimney. Unfortunately, you can't just chuck a bike in with a cool background, hope no, for the best, nice, it's a nice. nice. Crazy for Bikes is next. It's an, an original Israel Cycling Academy team frame, uh, a De Rosa Protoss. Connor had one of these back in the day. Um, what do you make of that? Oh, I do like that, actually. Not in, not, not the cleanest chain, not big, no. big, I think it's... Uh, I'm, I'm almost willing to let that slide as a super nice. I'm it's not, cool. it's a nice. Okay, yeah. We have to agree. 
Um, right, that's the last one for oh, this week. That's it. That's unfortunately the end of the show. We were so into the bike vault, we hadn't realised it was coming to I an know. end. I know. I hope you've enjoyed uh, this week's show and make sure you know you get involved in those polls and vote on the most desirable bike so we can get a better result from it, really. We didn't have any Uber Nices. No, we didn't. We live in hope that one day we get an Uber Nice. Yeah. Um, as you say, click yep. on the polls. Um, and also, something I'm really excited for, Strada Bianchi. It's oh. coming soon. It's the yeah. big, for me, that's the big, like, first race. And also, I like it because the tech side, because there's gravel bikes. It's sort of like, you know, it's gravel racing in there. So it's kind yeah. of like what tyres they use. They use, like, gravel tyres. You know, we're going to see any of that. Oh, do you know what else is uh, really cool? What? Um, it's all available on GCN+. Plus. <laughs> Territory restrictions do apply, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So just make sure it's better. Anyway, yeah, check it out. And if you enjoyed the show, like, subscribe, blah, 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 blah all that jazz. Bye. See ya. I'm off to watch GCN Plus. Bye. <laughs>